my first ever Star Trek review. Yes, with the release of Star Trek Beyond in this summer, I thought it'd be good to go back and review all the previous films. So, this is my review of Star Trek 1, the motion picture. Dun, 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 dun. <coughs> right. So, I mean, <coughs> just to confess, I've never seen the original series, I've never seen any of the TV series, or bits of them on TV, but I've only seen the two J.J. Abrams films. I haven't seen any others, so <clears throat> this is a first time review. This is the, this is a, you know, the first time I've actually seen this film, so yeah. <clears throat> actually, I confess, I did try to watch it a few years back, but I gave up because I found it too slow. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's press on. So, uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture, the plot is that um, Captain Kirk comes back to uh, take command of the Enterprise, um, Spock comes out of exile and back to join the team because they have to go and uh, investigate this kind of big space cloud known as um, Vecher, I think it's called. <coughs> Trekkies do correct me if I'm wrong. Um, because this is the first time I've seen it, and um, they discover, I mean, this, these will all be spoilers, all these reviews will be spoilers, and um, <clears throat> they discover that um, the big space cloud feature is actually an, an, a Voyager, and um, it's trying to discover where it came from, so it's trying to link, to lock onto <clears throat> a human source to discover where it where its origins are, where where it comes from, and um, you, that's pretty much the gist of the plot. That's all it is. I mean, it's not it's not hugely complicated. It's it's fairly basic. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Star Trek the Motion Picture. As a first time viewer, I liked it. It was good. I have to confess, it was much better than I thought it was going to be because um, the first time I tried to watch this film years ago, it, it bored the crap out of me and it, it was too slow and I couldn't get into it. Um, I'm not going to deny that the, 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 there are slow moments in this film, but I'm actually quite surprised that the pace wasn't as slow as I thought it would be. It actually moved fairly quick. It wasn't like brisk pace, but um, <clears throat> it actually moved along quite well. <clears throat> the drama is very interesting, and that was something that I really uh, liked. Um, I don't know the names of all the cast, but the characters, um, obviously got William Shatner, who plays Captain Kirk, and... Um, no, the original. So, yeah, he's um, he's very good. Um, he's very good. He's very commanding, and he's he's very different to the way Chris Pine does it in the reboot. Um, and it's, I mean, in this in this story, um, you see there's tension between him and Bones, and and some of the others as well. Um, I mean, you got all the classic crew. You know, you got Scotty, who's pretty funny. Um, you got Bones, who's good as well. Um, <clears throat> Uhura, who kind of doesn't do much. Um, Got Spock, obviously. Leonard Nimoy is Spock. I mean, God rest his soul. Leonard Nimoy is one of those actors where it's hard to see him other, you know, in anything else <laughs> other than Spock. Um, I mean, there was actually he was actually in the third Transformers film with Michael Bay, Dark of the Moon, and uh, <coughs> excuse me, and he actually did re wreck on one of his lines from Star Trek, uh, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, which obviously isn't in this film, um, it's in another film. Um, I think, you know, the characters are decent here, I mean, uh, you've also got this other guy called Decker, I, I, was, taught, I, was, I was watching this film and uh, I had uh, the watcher on um, Google Plus called, video called me and I was sh um, projecting the video through the, uh, my webcam to him. Um, 
and when I was watching, I was thinking, um, you know, I kept saying to him um, about Decker, I was like, that guy is so intense. I mean, uh, if there is a weak link of the cast, it's probably him. He's not terrible, but I just find him, his expressions very intense. Is that intentional for the character, or is he just doing that because he can't act? I mean, every, every, every like, close-up of him is like... Yeah, that, that's literally it. <clears throat> I mean, I mean, you know, I didn't really get his performance. I mean, and they introduced this whole kind of um, love story thing um, between him and uh, uh, Lieutenant Alia or whatever her name was, the one who the, the the bald chick, the one who's bald, and then who they clone, which is what I thought was an interesting idea, um, and. This this is this is one of the films you need on Blu-ray. If you have a Blu-ray player, grab the Star Trek films because the, I mean visually it is just gorgeous to look at. It is a visual masterpiece. I mean, and actually I have to talk about this. The biggest compliment I can give this film is the production design, considering that you know beforehand they were on a TV budget and now they had like 46 million for this film. They had a pretty sweet. That was a pretty good budget for the time. You, this film has, has been made very well. I mean, it's it's, a, <coughs> it's an expensive film, no question. <laughs> I mean, and you know that 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 does go to show that the time and the effort that went into the uh, production design, and I, I I do like that a lot. Um, and it was very interesting to look at that. That kind of helped me um, <coughs> get through the, sl the slow pace because I I enjoyed looking at all of the um, production design. Um, the film as well. Uh, yes, the movie is slow. It does start out quite s slow. There are, I mean, there's a lot of um, establishing shots and wide shots with that music. You know, da 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 And you know, I mean, it's fine because I, I enjoyed seeing everything for the first time. I mean, I'm sure if you were to go back to this film, it would feel a bit slower. Um, but as a first time viewer, I was quite impressed the way. I mean, even though I've seen a couple of other Star Trek films, I've it's nice to see it for the first time, kind of as it was back in 1979. Obviously, it was trying to compete with a lot of other things like Star Wars, which had become a hit, um, or A New Hope, which came out two years before, and then uh, Moonraker, the James Bond film, which was set in space, and that was out in the same year. Um, so yeah, <laughs> there was the sci-fi world was very competitive then. <laughs> Um, I, I I feel the climax is good. I mean, it's not like this film isn't really an action film. It's um, you know, so I, I think younger viewers might not like this because they might want a bit of action because it was sci-fi. I mean, it's an um, engaging mystery. I mean, and it's um, it's, it's an expedition film. It's an expedition film into the unknown, and I like that side of Star Trek that it's not completely based on action. Although the reboot kind of makes that argument that it could be, um, it's a really it's a full-on expedition, and they go into the unknown parts of space. I do apologise, I have a cold, um, <coughs> and uh, the climax. I mean, it was very interesting how um, Decker kind of, well, uh, sacrificed himself. I guess um, <coughs> you know. The plot is good, it's well written, you know, it, it makes sense. <coughs> the pacing is slow, but I I think it's kind of necessary that it's slow, because you need to establish, you know, you need to establish the, you know, for people who haven't seen the TV show, like myself, you need to understand who these people are, why they're doing this, and, <coughs> I mean, that's the, thing, that's the thing, there's no kind of explanation into the origins, they spend time, you know, showing you you know, Starfleet and the world and the characters, but they don't explain any of the origins, which I think is, is fine because it will encourage people to uh, go back to the TV series, so it, it might promote the TV series as well, this film, which is great. Um, <coughs> the music is fantastic by Jerry Goldsmith. I love him, he's a great composer. Um, and I think his score for this film is no exception. I mean, you know, that theme is just brilliant. Um... <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and you know it's very, very dramatic and loud, and it's very kind of triumphant as well. The score, um, if that's the appropriate word to use. Um, 
I'm not really a Trekkie. I, I don't know much about Star Trek at the moment. Um, I mean, there's the opening's quite good with the when you see like those. Uh, I believe the Klingons, but um, yeah, yeah, I think they are. I mean, as I said, I'm not a Trekkie, so do correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I won't be offended. <coughs> but um, as a first film, I thought it was a fantastic way to go in, and uh, it, it it does a great job of, you know, intriguing you. This film is full of intrigue, and I, I like that. I mean, I, I wouldn't call this a great film. I don't think it's great, but, I mean, it's good. It's good. I mean, it's it's better than I thought it was going to be, and... Um, it's vis the visuals and the production design are really what sell it for me. The characters are, are decent. Um, there are a lot of characters. I mean, I like seeing George Takei as Sulu as well. Um, there's a couple of exciting scenes. It could have done with a couple more exciting scenes. I mean, it's quite, it is slow. Um, but, I mean, it's... it's Yeah, that's why some young kids probably won't like this film because they might find it boring. Um... Yeah, I mean, there's there's a great scene where uh, the crew are all attacked by the... I think they're, they're going into the uh, the cloud, um, the Veecher, I think it's called. Um, <coughs> and there's, like, this lightning and electrical stuff that affects them. That's when the lieutenant dies. Um, that's a very exciting scene. Um, apart from that, there's not many other exciting scenes, so it could have done with a bit more excitement. Um, and, you know... But still, as a first film, it did intrigue me very much, and I look forward to seeing where the films go from there. I mean, so I've seen, I've seen the reboot films. Um, I will review those as well, um, and Star Trek Beyond. I'm going to review all thirteen of them and uh, all thirteen films and rank them uh, in summer. So that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on the motion picture. I don't have much to say about it, to be fair. enough to warrant a sequel. <clears throat> Apparently they were going to do another series, but um, they thought, well, the movie did well, so they thought, well, let's make some movies. Yeah, why not? And so they did. So next time I shall be reviewing Star Trek 2, The Wrath of Khan, so stay tuned for that. Um, and that's all I've got to say on the motion picture for now. What do you think of the motion picture? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Comment down below and let me know what you think. And, um, Thank you for watching, and as well as I'm Mr. Tatars11.